Greetings, this is Jared Love, and in this video I'm going to be going over how to negate transforms. So getting the translates, rotates, and for completeness scales to negate. So you hear my sample scene, you can see I've got a NURB circle and a locator parented to it. So of course when I move this, the locator is going to follow with it because that's what parenting does. So I'm going to start with the translates. And in order to negate the translates, what we need is a multiply divide node. So I'm going to make one here. And by default, they come in with the operation set to multiply, which is what we need. So I don't have to bother with that. But I'm going to set the input to XYZ to negative 1. And then we're going to connect the translate from the NURB circle as the input. And the output will go to the translate of the locator. Now you could leave it with just the, the multi-adder connected, but <clears throat> there are times where that's not exactly stable or the translates don't really work correctly. So it's always better usually to go ahead and connect the individuals. So you saw here where I had the multi connected and as soon as I connected that translate X, it went ahead and connected the Y and Z for me. It's a quick little shorthand to where you can do it a little faster. It's just a few less mouse clicks for you. So now that we've got that, you can see if I grab the circle, that locator is now staying exactly where it is. So the translate values have pumped in through that multiply divide node, and they've been multiplied by negative 1, and now they're the opposite value. So, And if you can switch this, so say the circle is actually going to be parented to the locator, then when you move this, you see that the locator moves the opposite direction of the direction I'm moving. So you see the mouse is moving the opposite direction as the locator. So this is something where you can basically lock down a node and its parent will be the one that goes the opposite direction instead of the child. So I'm going to go ahead and just reparent that the way I had it. Okay. So let, next, let's go into the rotation. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, the multiply divide worked out pretty well. Let's go ahead and do that again. So let's give it a try. So again, this is negative 1 here. And since I duplicated it, it doesn't need to be reset. So I'll go ahead and connect my rotate. And you see it added this unit conversion node which isn't really a bad thing. It's, it's something that Maya will add in and help you out with. <laughs> it's trying to be helpful by creating this node. And what it is, in case you don't know, is the reason we didn't get one to pop up with this multiply divide node up here is because these attributes, their attribute type is a double linear and this attribute type is a float. So there's no conversion of, of those unit types between each other, whereas the rotates are a double angle. And that, I think, is using radians. So the radian units need to be converted to the float units. So this unit conversion node, you can see it's got a conversion factor here. And so it basically takes the value that you've plugged in, multiplies it by that number and spits it in here so that this can then be a value of zero because this is this has a value of zero. <clears throat> but this to me is a little bit clunky. Uh, you've got a lot of extra connections for just this one simple thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and delete these and I'll delete these as well. Of course, mine is being very helpful for me in going ahead and deleting those nodes. So you could also just you know use tab and do unit conversion. You see it there. So you don't have to create it first by connecting. So I'm gonna take this, do the rotate X, and then kick it over here to the rotate X. And then this unit conversion factor I'm gonna put as negative one so it's going to take this value multiply it by negative one and then spit it out into this 
So now that I've got that, I'm going to duplicate this a couple times. And since I duplicated it, this is now negative 1, so I don't have to change that. And let's go ahead and get those there. Let's connect that and that. And then we'll take the Y here, connect into the input, and then we'll connect this one into the input as well. So you can see that's much cleaner. I'm, instead of seven nodes, I've got three. Okay, so now if I rotate this on a single channel here, the X, the Y, and the Z, it looks like it's pretty good because we see that locator isn't moving. But if I rotate them all at the same time, you can see that that locator is now kind of wobbling and spinning in place which is not what we want. So there's a quick and easy fix for that. If we look right here at this rotate order, you see it's X, Y, Z. All we need to do is take the rotate order, flip it around, and apply that to the node that we're negating. So then this guy, instead of X, Y, Z, is going to be Z, Y, X, because that's the opposite. And so now when I select this and rotate, you see how that locator is staying exactly where it is. It's no longer kind of wobbling or flipping around or anything. And that's great, except when we move this and then rotate. So you see how now the locator is kind of moving around whenever I rotate if I've got some translation applied. And you see how it, it it's not staying where it's positioned. Now the reason for this is <clears throat> because the translation space is trying to work inside of the rotated space of the parent. So when there's no translation, it's it's zero, but when you move it, then rotate it. That's when you get that translation in the rotation space. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is we actually need to split up the rotation and the translation into two different nodes. So I'm going to create, let's do a cube, just a regular cube and I'm gonna scale this down to 0.25 and edit delete by type history because we don't need the history okay so now in here what I'm gonna do is let's get rid of that shape node because we don't need it and I'm going to I'm gonna connect this into the translates we'll leave the rotates connected to the locator so I'll go ahead and delete these and then connect that and connect that. Okay, and then now the, the cube needs to be parented to the locator. Okay, so now when I move it, you see the, the cube stays behind. The locator went up here, but now when I rotate this, you see how the locator stays in its same orientation that it had before. So that way, this cube has the same location reference to the locator as it did before. So it's now negating the rotation and the translation. So that's what we want. And if you wanted to flip that to where the circle was on the bottom, you can do it just like that. You need the, the rotation first, then the translation, and then your node here. So now you see when I move this, the, the cube freaks out and moves wherever it's going to go. And then if I rotate, they're both freaking out a little bit, but the circle you see remains exactly where it is. It doesn't change its orientation at all. So that's that. And now normally I wouldn't use a locator and a cube or anything like that. I would just use an empty transform node, but I'm using those so that you can see how these move, how those nodes actually move around when you're doing this negation. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to do the scale next, and uh, I'll just go ahead and hook it into the cube first just to kind of show you what can happen. But what we actually want to do, we, we have to split this out as well. So I'm going to take this scale, I'm going to open it on both of these, and let's just duplicate this multiply divide node 
we're going to have to change some settings on it, but that's fine. So what I want to do is I want to take the opposite scale value and plug that into the cube. But it's not the same as this where you multiply it by negative 1. What we actually need to do is we're going to take 1 and divide it by the value from our control. So one thing we do need to do is we need to change the operation to divide. So now we can here we can plug in the scale there and get our XYZ and then we're gonna take the output and we're gonna plug into this one and do the XYZ. So now what you see is if we scale this, you see how the cube is staying as it is. So if we take this to a value of 2, and 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, which is the value we have on our scale. So it's scaling the circle up twice as big as it normally is, and it's scaling the cube down half as big as it normally is. So that is, that is the proper way to negate scale. Okay. Oh, and you'll notice when I hit that to zero you're gonna get this warning and it doesn't really seem to be a big deal like when you're actually using it because you see the warning isn't popping up it's only when that gets to zero you get that divide by zero error because you can't divide by zero but in all intents and purposes it, it usually you're usually not gonna scale something to zero so it rarely becomes a problem and it was just a warning not an error so it should be okay so now you'll see here if I move this and rotate it and now if I throw a scale on it you see how the cube is now kind of shearing and and freaking out a little bit that's because of the scale space is incorrect so what we need to do is we need to separate it out again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a NURB sphere. And let's give it a radius of 0.1 and edit delete by type history. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with that is let's get rid of that shape node. And then down here I'm going to plug in the scales. And I'm going to delete these connections. So now this guy needs to be sandwiched in between the circle and the locator. So go ahead and parent that here and then parent the locator to that. So now what you see is I move this, rotate it, that cube's still where it is, scale it, and huzzah! The cube stays as it is. It is fully negated. And just like with the others, you can put the circle on the bottom of the parent stack. And that way, move it, rotate it, scale it, and that circle stays exactly as it is. It does not get any change. And that's what we want. So. A quick little recap for negating translates you get that multiply divide node you set it to multiply and you set the input to XYZ to negative 1 of course you could do it in the 1 and then just connect into the input 2 it doesn't really matter because you're multiplying by negative 1 to negate rotation <coughs> you can you could do the same thing with a multiply divide but this is going to evaluate faster because it's less connections and nodes to go through to do that math. Um, so you're going from your rotate into your unit conversion nodes, multiplying by negative one, and then going into your driver, driven node. Going into your, your driven node. And then to negate scale, you have your multiply divide node and you have input one set to one you set the operation to divide 
and plug into the input 2 for your scale values from your driver and then plug that output into your scale for your driven. And one more thing, you have to have the correct hierarchy order. So you have to negate scale first, then rotation, then translation. And it it's that same order regardless of if you're using the node you're using to drive the negation to be the parent or the child of these nodes. And now you're probably thinking that's great and all, but I don't really see use for that. And if that's the case, then I've got another video that you can kind of look at and hopefully that'll give you some ideas of how you might want to use these. It's also worth noting you don't have to negate all of them. You could just do one or two. I hope you found the video informative and useful and have a blessed day.